unconsciously or consciously, our immigrant parents sometimes ruin our inner voice. Let me explain. Growing up, my parents immigrated to this country. I was born in the U.S., but for them, it was very difficult. We grew up with very low income. Both of my parents were students, and so they struggled financially while having four kids. And they were very hard on themselves to be able to provide for us, and as a consequence, they were very hard on my sister and I, who were the two oldest sisters in the family. And they instilled these beliefs in needing to provide and needing to be very strict and pushing yourself past your limit and being scarce with resources, being scarce with money to the point where that actually became my unconscious or subconscious belief that I believed spiritually that I was poor. And what is it when you believe spiritually that you are poor? It's that you do not have anything. You do not possess anything. You do not have enough. And therefore, you're constantly lacking. And so when you have this unconscious belief that nothing will work out or that you do not have enough, you will constantly have a lack of everything, a lack of resources, a lack of peace, a lack of money, a lack of food. You will live in scarcity when you believe that you are poor. So there's a poor mindset as long uh, <laughs> that goes along with um, a poor mentality. And these beliefs were very instilled into my sister and I, and we carry those thoughts and we carry those, or we used to carry that subconscious belief that we were constantly lacking. Therefore, we needed to be very scarce with everything. We needed to hold everything very close to us. We needed to penny pinch. We needed to um, save food until the very last. We needed to store food that was going bad, even though none of us were going to eat it. We needed to not buy new clothes when obviously the clothes that we had were done. You can't even donate them. That's how many holes there are. You know what I mean? Like that type of poor quality is, was our standard. And the older I got, the more I learned to let go of this mentality. Sometimes I do still see my, my siblings struggling with it. And I try and coach them out of it, or maybe have them look at what they're actually thinking subconsciously when they are practicing this mentality or they're practicing scarcity or a poor mentality and I I want my siblings and I want my family to have the best Um, and I don't mean spend recklessly I don't mean spend without having it or carelessness I think a lot of people tend to encourage that that uh, claim to be spiritual that you should just spend without caring because you'll get it back no that's not what i'm saying that's kind of like binge eating when you're overindulging in something there's also a sense of lack there's also a sense of you're withholding something for yourself what i mean is take care of yourself and be reasonable within your limits so if something is literally falling apart at the seams it has a bunch of holes it's old, exchange it for something new. Throw away those old socks, please. If the food is going bad and moldy, throw it away. Buy some new food. That is a necessity. It's a basic necessity. And so sometimes poor immigrant, fam- poor immigrant families that are lacking resources will instill that everything must be must not go to waste it must last and when you teach this to your kids it 
subconsciously becomes their inner voice that they're constantly lacking, that they don't have enough resources and that their resources are scarce. So the older you get, even though the, you get more resources, more resources, you get more money, maybe you now work and you're no longer just re, uh, relying on your parents' resources, that subconscious belief will continue to haunt you. Like I said, sometimes I'll see a family member with obviously something that needs to be thrown away, like a purse, that's like falling apart, looks gross, looks old. Like, obviously, you need to let go of that item. But it's hard because they have that mentality of, like, I need to use it until literally there's, like, nothing left. And it's a process, but it is possible to let go of that mentality because if you don't get out of that mentality, nothing will ever change. Nothing will ever get better. And I had to... As a cycle breaker, I had to basically also end, end up teaching my parents this this mentality of not living in fear and not living in lack. Um, sometimes you grow up and you have to teach your parents as well. Nobody's perfect. And I saw that the more that I lived in lack, the more that I forced myself to not let anything go to waste to think that I was lacking in everything, to force myself to work in, in jobs or positions that my soul would scream every time I would have to wake up and go there. Um, I knew that something was wrong. But again, that's the environment I grew up in. Those are the people that raised me. They, that was my, my inner voice. And um, in order to end this cyclical misery... I needed to put a stop to it. I needed to consciously understand the thoughts that I was thinking or the habits that I formed were harming me and were harming my well-being. Um, I, can, I can give an example of how studying, for example. I would be extremely critical with myself when it wouldn't click right away. And I would sit there and I would study until I got the subject. So like, let's say I started at 6 p.m. I would sit there in, until like 3 a.m. If I didn't, if the subject didn't click right away. A normal person would probably be like, hmm, this is a new subject. Let me do two, three chapters from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Then the next day I will pick it up again. My mentality was so extremely critical of myself that I just would not let my ego down like that. My ego completely controlled my conception or my preconception of myself. It would dictate everything that I do and everything that I felt about myself. And I would, if I wasn't successful the first time that I picked something up, I would completely leave it. And I needed to, get, I needed to basically reparent myself to be like, have a planner, write down exactly what I was going to do that day, and not rate myself on how well I did. And just do the same thing every day, wake up at the same time, have the same schedule, again, two, three chapters only, and nothing else. Nothing more, nothing less. And this thought pattern completely changed my life that I don't have to suffer like it's so simple it's so simple to be like listen not everything has to be suffering but it's so hard to relearn when that is your pattern of thinking that I must suffer in order to be successful I must suffer in order to make money I must suffer in order to um, reach my dreams and reach my goals. But sometimes what we don't understand is that our suffering is simply a byproduct of your inner self being like, I don't want to do that. Sometimes it is procrastination. Sometimes it is laziness. But let me tell you, if you wake up and you go to a job every single day and you can barely get up because just the thought of it makes you so miserable... 
Something's gone. Like, something's off. You need to get out of that situation. And I, I found myself in that exact position. I worked a sales job. And every morning, I would be miserable. Every day, I would be miserable. And I hated the job so much. There were nice people there. I had some fun times, some, some good memories. But I hated that job. And I, I didn't want that to be my future. I didn't see myself continuing to be a sales representative in the next 10 years or so. And I could tell that the, the people I was working for also knew that I didn't see this as my future and that I was just there for the time being. So the people I was working with, my bosses, my managers, they would react negative, negatively to me and I would react negatively because I don't like that job in the moment. And therefore, it would be this negative, vicious cycle of, I hate this job and it was being re- reinforced because the people that were managing me didn't like me because I hated the job. And so for them, it was offensive that here I am, here to work, not taking it as seriously as them because for them, that's their career. For me, it's just a temporary job. And I was completely clueless to how those people saw me or what I was doing as an effect of continuing to be there even though I was miserable. Um, I was making my life more miserable by being miserable, if that makes sense. And sometimes there's synchronicities in life. Sometimes there will be people that will be like, "What are you, why are you doing it then? Why are you here? And I had that exact same revelation of, I had a coworker one day just be like, listen, I can tell that you don't want to do this. So I'm going to ask you, why are you doing it? You're wasting your time by being here. And I think that you need to find a new job. She started even giving suggestions of what I could do instead. Because she was literally telling me that I was just wasting my time by being there. And I couldn't necessarily disagree with her. But in the moment, I couldn't give her an answer of why I was still there. And I think after a couple of days, after having that conversation with her, I literally quit. Because that was the sign that I needed to be like, listen, even other people know that I don't like this job, that I don't want to be here. And if other people know, then why am I here? You know, like, if other people are even telling me, this isn't for you, you should leave, why am I fighting to be here? And so I just took it as a sign of me finding a different path, and I've never been happier by following that path, by listening to that advice. And I just wanted to let you know that having that inner voice, having your parents' inner voice, that was so harsh and so critical at a time where they needed that, maybe that was the conclusion they came to, it shouldn't be your conclusion. It shouldn't be your inner voice because you saw how miserable your parents were if you grew up in that environment. And... If you don't wish the same fate, then you're going to need to do something different. And that's very scary because the path isn't laid out to you. You don't know the steps. You don't know the outcome. You don't know the future. But I suggest you seek out an environment where at least you like being there. At least you have an intrigue, an interest, and you will find mentors. You will find peers that will help you find the right direction. For me, that was going back to school. That was finding the major I actually really wanted to do. That was finding relevant work experience in that major. And while it's still small, it's it's still not like a major accomplishment. I know that these little baby steps I'm making are building towards a greater future. And I'm going to continue to to raise myself with positive reinforcement because I was not given that as a child. In fact, I remember this memory of my dad. I asked him one time to teach me how to ride a bike. And the way that he taught me is how I still 
I would catch myself still teaching myself to this day. He basically made me stay up, stay at this park till like literally midnight learning how to ride the bike. So basically, I had to learn that day because he didn't raise no quitter, right? And I did. And that was what reinforced my belief that everything I have, I ever accomplish has to come immediately. Which is what made me a perfectionist. Which is what made me so harsh and so critical on myself. Which is what made my ego and my conception of myself become worse and worse. Um, and... When I got older and I was like, I don't want the same life that my parents had. I don't want the same struggles. I knew that I needed to address those, those little moments that I remember that shaped me. And I needed to completely change myself as a person. Because I didn't want to be miserable in order to make money. For other people, that was scary. They thought that I was just going to become homeless or broke when I just quit my job and didn't have any backup plans. But when you completely let yourself hit rock bottom, that's when you figure out what you actually want to do. And it's okay to hit rock bottom. It's okay to be behind everybody else. Because you see your peers, they're, they're all, they have it figured out. They know what they want to do. Nobody, wants to, nobody knows what they want to do in all actuality. Even the kids that are like ahead of you and like, finished college by the time they were 16, got all their degrees, guarantee, I guarantee that they still don't really know what they want to do. Because they're, mentally, they're, the, they're still the same age as you, you know? And props to them for being academically gifted and academically ahead. But nobody has life figured out. And by going back, stopping yourself even, and just sitting and thinking, even if it's for years, because I took an academic break for years before I went back. You'll be ahead because you actually know what you want to do. While everybody else is just running, but they don't know the destination. When you know your destination, you know where the yellow brick road is headed. Life actually becomes exponentially easier and you're no longer miserable. You're actually happy and full of life. And you get to stop and smell the roses. You get to stop and like make friends along the way. You build connections. You build networks that last because you're actually going after what you really want to do. Because why? You sat and actually thought about it and you let yourself hit rock bottom. And you were miserable. And there was that one thing that actually pulled you out of it. And is now the source of your happiness. Um, because you've actually figured out what you want to do. So I encourage you to actually go backwards in order to go forward. Start from the basics, start from how you talk to yourself, what your inner world is, how you take criticism, how you teach yourself new things, and rewire it. Reprogram yourself completely, because if you don't do that, you won't get anywhere. And sometimes our immigrant parents unfortunately taught us something that was, in hindsight, negative by trying to protect us from the world. And I'm letting you know now that it's okay to change that programming. And no longer struggle. Because you don't need to. You don't actually need to struggle. You don't actually need to be miserable. Um... As somebody who figured that out and changed my life around and, and actually does ex only what I want to do. I only do what I want to do. I only talk to people I want to talk to. I only go where I want to go. Nothing bad happened. Only good things happen. So try it out. See how you like it. And if you started doing this, please let me know how it went. This was my experience. I want to know exactly what was making you miserable and what is now making you happy. I really enjoy hearing stories like this and it inspires me to continue on my path. So thank you for listening. I hope to chat again soon.